Chapter 5, Jesus does many signs and wonders. He heals a crippled man at the bosom of Bethsaida. Jesus then crossed, uh, went to uh, the Sea of Galilee, crossed over the shore of the Sea of Galilee to the other side. And it says that a great crowd of people noticed uh, and followed him because they saw the signs that he had performed and the healing of the sick. So the, his ministry is really beginning to kick off, I guess you could say. And people are, are wanting to follow him for what he can do for them. It says, and then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. There's so much here for the reader and the believer to know and understand. Jesus begins the healing ministry. He crosses a sea. A great crowd of people follow him. Uh, he feeds people with bread, right? He crosses into 
goes up into a mountainside. He sits down with his disciples. And to, to cap all of this off, John says that this is the Jewish Passover festival was really near. Jesus feeds 5,000 men, not counting women and children there on those slopes of the mountainside and around the Sea of Galilee. And the scripture says in verse 14, after the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, and the sign was, of course, the breaking of the bread and feeding of the people. Surely this is a prophet who has come into the world. Now Jesus, knowing that they had intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountainside by himself. When evening came, his disciples went to the lake. They crossed over into Capernaum, but Jesus didn't go with them. As the evening progressed, a storm came, as you will recall. The disciples were fearful. Jesus walks on the water, gets into the boat, calms the storm, and calms the fears of his disciples. In verse 22, it says, The next day, the crowds uh, that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that there was only one boat had been there. The disciples and Jesus were gone. And so what they did, then some uh, boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread from the Lord and had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus all the disciples were there. They got in the boat and they went to Capernaum in search for Jesus. So the crowds of people now are walking around the Sea of Galilee, some in boats. And now we get to verse 25. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, you're looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. And then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? And Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. And so they asked him, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? In, in other words, our fathers ate the manna in the desert. And as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Our fathers ate, okay, is that all? No, next verse? That's it? Did I say? That's 31, that's where you were at. Okay, verse 31, verse 32. And Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on give us this bread. And Jesus, then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Um, thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. This statement of our Lord, this I am the statement follows one of the most famous miracles that we can only marvel at, at the sheer scale of the miracle, where Jesus takes just a few loaves of bread and fish and feeds so many people. The, our Bible scholars now and commentators call this a throwback miracle. And what does that mean? Well, throwback miracle means it goes back to the Old Testament. And, and John is so full of Exodus language, especially in John chapter 6. Jesus says here, I am. Where does that come from? It comes from when Moses stood before the burning bush and he asked, Who do I tell Pharaoh and the people of Egypt who you are? And, and God spoke from the bush and he said, I am. 
who I am. And so when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he is saying that he is God who is without beginning and end, eternal, unchanging, the source of all life. You see, if Jesus had only used that phrase one time, you could have said, well, he made an accident. Uh, you know, a slip of the tongue. He didn't mean to say it. But the truth is, in John's gospel, he makes several I am statements. But, and it tells us that Jesus knew exactly what he was doing when he took the name of the eternal God to himself. And by attaching himself to the Exodus story, Jesus is pointing to who he is. And in addition, if you scan through John chapter 6, you'll find many things that tell you about the Exodus story or remind you. So if you're a Jew in the day in which Jesus is breaking bread there on the hillside and performing this great miracle, all of these things that are happening should be a reminder and should be pointing back to the Old Testament of who Jesus really is. You see, Jesus crosses the sea to the other side. He has an amazing sign. There are crowds of people who follow him. He goes up into a mountain. It's Passover time. He goes into the wilderness. And here Jesus, when he is surrounded by people who have a need that they cannot satisfy and that only he can provide. Listen, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to make the connection together. This is Exodus take two. And the feeding miracle at the beginning of John chapter 6 is at the heart of the I am statement of our Lord that we're considering today. The scale of this miracle is absolutely incredible. Understandably, the, the, the disciples doubt whether or not that they could feed all of these people, but Jesus knew exactly what to do. He gave thanks over a few pieces of bread and fish, <laughs> blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples to distribute the food as much as the people had need, and even there was leftovers. Just as in Exodus, when the great I am provided, Jesus here provides for his people. Now, Amen. this miracle, John, John is wanting you to know, is a signpost of what really satisfies. The people came looking for Jesus, and Jesus said, you know, you're, you're only here not because of the signs and wonders or because of who I really am, but because of the bread. Yes. <laughs> and because I can meet your need, that's why you're really here. But John is pointing to a greater reality. John is pointing to a reality, and Jesus specifically relates that reality, is that I am the bread of life that can satisfy your whole life, Amen. not just your physical hunger. Over and over, Jesus says, don't worry about what you're going to eat or wear, but worry about the eternal thing. Focus in on that. Make that your top priority. And then live a life of piety as you lead into the one who says, I am the great I am that satisfies Hallelujah. your soul. Amen. The crowds in today's passage would have been uh, living from hand to mouth. And here they're having someone like Jesus around could provide for a great need. I mean, this is better than the federal government. Have a, while you can feel some sympathy for their situation, we need to realize that they're missing, the crowds of people and the disciples are missing the central point of Jesus' miracle. In verse 14, Jesus shows the crowd and the disciples that they recognize Jesus to be a great prophet. They said, surely this is a prophet who has come into the world. And they are far away from the truth of understanding who Jesus really is. In verse 30, they ask him, what sign are you going to give? Because our father gave a sign to our ancestors by giving the bread and the manna from heaven. And Jesus says, 
hold my water. I couldn't say beer. You know, I mean, that's not right. Hold my water. And then he takes a few loaves of bread and fish. And he provides for their need. You see, this verse shows that they, they were still looking for a sign for Jesus to prove that he is the Son of God, that he is the great I Am. And I scratch my head and I say the most theological, greatest religious phrase that I could utter the lips of any pastor. Well done. What sign? He's healed crippled people. He's cast demons out. He's taken a few loaves of bread and fish and blessed and fed thousands of people. And you're still asking for a sign to believe. Hallelujah. What more does God have to do in our life? For us to believe in him yes. and trust him Amen. and give our whole life to him. Amen. Glory to God. They didn't understand what's going on around them. They couldn't see who's standing right in front of them. They could not work out what they really needed yes. to, to be fulfilled in them because their understanding was clouded. They didn't know who Jesus was. But Jesus, thank God, was ready to help and ready to show. In verse 27 and 28, he said, listen, don't work for food that spoils. I know you're following me because that's free religious assistance program. But that food will perish. The food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you for him, God the Father was pleased for his seal of approval. Amen. You're looking for a sign, but the Father has already given me a seal yes. of approval. Amen. And verse 33 says, For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank and Jesus is saying, You're in the right place, but you're thinking of the wrong thing. You don't see that you have a greater need than bread. Yes. Stop piling bread is not the answer to your problem. Your soul is hungry. Amen. Yes. And your spiritual life is thirsty. Yes. And you're only going to find satisfaction for your soul in the one who says, I am the bread of Amen. life. Amen. This miracle is about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. The miracle and the miracle in the Exodus wilderness are not just two-dimensional closed system miracles for providing physical need, but they're so much more. They always point to some greater significance. And that greater significance is, is that Jesus Christ, the great I Am, is the only one who satisfies us and provides for our soul. This miracle is about the great I am who knows our need Amen. and knows what we have need of and whose grace is already at work in your life providing that need before you're even able to speak it. Yes. In closing, if Jesus is only a pipe or a channel for God's blessing, then he becomes just like a government assistant program. We can put a quarter into the vending machine and get ever what we need out of it. But if every blessing is in Jesus, and we recognize that every blessing is in Amen. our Lord, the great I am, the source of life, the source of salvation, the source of redemption and healing and forgiveness. He is the gospel. He yes. is the good news. Amen. And once we have believed in him, verse 29 says that we have come into the bakery of God. Amen. I like that. We're able to feast on the bread of life. Yes. 
to rejoice along the side of the one who gave his body and his blood on the cross so that he could bring all of us into this full life of God. Amen. Every blessing is in Jesus, and Jesus is the satisfaction for our eternal soul. Yes. If you are trusting in anything other than Jesus, the bread of life, Amen. you are only receiving Thank false Jesus. satisfaction. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Last night, about 8 30, 9 o'clock, I went to uh, give my mama her night meds and take care of her and put her to bed. And I've been working hard for the last few months to lose a few pounds. Uh, after you get a report that you're uh, an, an, an AFib, or not AFib, but a flutter, uh, and you, you go through all of that, and then you get another report that says you're pre-diabetic and it's coming, and all of that, you realize, you know what, I might ought to do something. <laughs> Last night I put Mama to bed and as a reward for her doing good throughout the day, I, I have these little single ice cream bars that I give her, <laughs> they're about that big around and they're chocolate coated vanilla ice cream. You know what I'm talking about, yes. they're called like moo cows or something. Mm -hmm. And I gave Mama one and I walked by the refrigerator and there was one left. <laughs> and I said to myself over here, keep walking. <laughs> and myself over here said, oh, but you have done so well. <laughs> And you need to reward yourself oh, like your mother. Oh, my. And this side won. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to myself, I better eat this ice cream before I drive two blocks. Because if I walk in the house eating the ice cream and Angie sees me eating the ice cream, <laughs> then I've got to explain all of this all over again. Um. And it'd just be best that I just keep that little secret between me and the Lord. <laughs> right? When I laid down last night to go to sleep, all I could think about was how awful I felt. And I thought how that ice cream was going to satisfy what I needed at that particular moment. And it didn't. I shouldn't have had the ice cream, and I shouldn't have held something from my wife. I should have went in, confessed, Angie, I repent, I ate that ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. So if you want one, go ahead and get one, because I had something you haven't had today. Because we're doing this together, right? <laughs> now, I still hadn't told her, and I appreciate you don't eye. <laughs> Let's just go to the grave with this one. <laughs> but I want you to know that there is nothing in this world. Nothing. No relationship. No love. And I have great loves in my life. Mm -hmm. But there is there, there, there's not anything that I could either put into my body or wear on my body or do for pleasure that satisfies my soul like the bread of life. Yes, amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm learning each and every day to put my faith and trust in Him, aren't we? That whatever we go through in life, be it death, be it stroke, be it cancer, yeah. be it breakups of relationships or hardships in life or out of a job, yeah. or dealing with health, that the only thing that can get me through and satisfy me and know that I have abundant life here and yes. eternal life to come. Amen. Is found 
and what you're going to receive this morning, the bread yes. and in the cup. Amen. Come and receive only what can satisfy your soul. Yes. Amen. Miss Suzanne, would you come and lead us in the great Thanksgiving? We'll put it up on the wall as well. The great Thanksgiving. And we thank uh, Pastor Suzanne for coming and sharing uh, and leading us in the great Thanksgiving. Thank you. it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want to ask those who will be assisting in the Holy Communion and our ushers, if they would come and uh, kneel at the uh, uh, off the altar. You can use both. Uh, 
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks and praise for the bread of life satisfies our soul. Lord, help us to put our faith and trust in you for all the longings of life to be found and met in your grace. Arise and go in faith. Amen. Amen.
steel. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Arise and go in peace now <coughs> and be rich in heavenly treasures. May your life be filled with thoughts and deeds celestial. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life that's come down from heaven. Not just to satisfy our earthly hunger, but he provides for that need, praise God. But he provides for a need much deeper than anyone else in this world can satisfy. Yes. And that is the forgiveness of sin. He forgives us of our guilt and our shame and has given to us his precious blood. Amen. In order that though our sins be like scarlet, now they're what? 
Why is Why? Snow. Go in peace. May the peace of Christ be with you right after this announced. I just got one announcement. First uh -huh. of all, Jesse is, went to the hospital, but is home from the hospital. He has to go next week and have a heart shot back to the Yes. Secondly, a night of Italy, one of our youth, um, is going back to Texas, back to school. So um, she will not be with us after today, and maybe not even next summer because she's going into the military. Wonderful. Oh, wow. Where is Anaya? Where is she here? She's in there with the little ones. In okay. Anaya, our prayers and blessing oh, go Anaya. with you. We love you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now you are. If you, if you want a Prado pencil for your um, kindergarten through college age, I've got some right back here in the back. Pick them up. You are dismissed. Go in peace. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Bye, AG. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless you all, and stay blessed with the love of Christ. Amen. Bye. God bless. Take care. Ingat kayo lahat. Bye-bye.